Hi, I'm Dave Salahi. Welcome to this episode of The Photo Performance. In this series of podcasts, I cover the digital processing tools and techniques that comprise the photo performance in the 21st century. These podcasts and posts provide in-depth reviews which are hard to find elsewhere on the web. After watching this podcast, please visit my website, photoperformance.org, and add your comments and questions. And if you find something useful here, please share it on your favorite social media platform. In part one, I briefly mentioned Adobe Bridge, which is, of course, part of the Creative Cloud. However, it later occurred to me that I ought to point out that the Creative Cloud also includes a new version of Adobe Camera Raw, which has been significantly enhanced. First, there is a new processing engine which does a noticeably better job at converting raw camera sensor data into viewable photos. Second, the user interface has been changed to make it easier to use. New controls, which match the set of controls in Lightroom's Develop module, are now in ACR7. And the default values of the main controls are all set to zero when you first open an image. This provides a greater ability to adjust images and makes it easier to remember where you started with each slider. I'd also like to mention a new feature in Bridge that you might not have noticed, but which I find very useful. You probably already know that you can click on the breadcrumbs to go to a parent folder. And you may know about folder cruising, which lets you see the subfolders of each folder and navigate to them. But the new feature I like is the ability to click on the last folder name to display the full path in the standard Windows form. This allows me to copy the path to Windows Explorer, for example, or some other program's file dialog so that I can quickly go there. Or if I'm already in a folder in Windows Explorer, I can copy the path from there and paste it into Bridge to go straight to that folder in Bridge. Okay, next up is Photoshop Touch. I'm going to start by giving an overview of its extensive feature set. Then I'll discuss some workflow options, such as how to get photos from your phone onto your tablet for editing. You need to do that because Photoshop Touch is only available for tablets. Of course, any photos you take with your tablet will already be available for editing. And then I'll finish up with a look at some of the limitations of the current version of the software and the Creative Cloud. First, I'd like to say how impressed I am with this mobile version of Photoshop. Adobe has done an amazing job of packing features and functionality into Photoshop Touch, and they've accomplished all this with good performance. I found the performance on my original Motorola Zoom tablet, now about 18 months old, to be perfectly acceptable. Here's a quick overview of the major editing features. Layers, including variable opacity and layer blend modes. A full toolbox including marquee selection, lasso selection, magic wand and this new scribble selection, brush and paint tools with effect modes, and this edge aware option, clone stamp and healing brush tools, an eraser, and blur and smudge tools. Continuing on we have various copy and paste options, various selection options, including Feather, Transform, and even Refine Edge. Here's a free Transform tool. In this menu, we find a dozen different adjustment effects, including Curves, Levels, Noise Reduction, and an Auto Fix adjustment. However, these are not adjustment layers, as in Photoshop. These are applied destructively. Of course, if you're concerned, you can always duplicate a layer before applying, or undo afterwards if you don't like the effect. And conceding nothing to Instagram, Photoshop Touch includes 32 special effects organized into Basic, Stylize, Artistic, and Photo categories. And one more thing, there are options for resizing images, cropping, rotating, adding text, gradients, and even warping. Finally, if you need more screen space for editing, each of these palettes and menus can be retracted individually or all at once. I've been working with Photoshop Touch off and on for a couple of weeks now, and there are still some features I haven't tried out yet. 
The only missing feature I noticed that someone might want was red eye removal. The Photoshop Touch feature list is extensive for a tablet app, and for the most part, the features work quite well. Anyone who is familiar with Photoshop will instantly recognize most of the concepts. Furthermore, Adobe has done a very good job of adapting these features from a mouse or pen-based user interface to a touchscreen user interface. I'm not going to go into detail about these features because there's a lot of other information already available, including Adobe's own tutorials built into Photoshop Touch. These tutorials are very well done and lead you step by step through the basics. In addition to showing the mechanics of using the features, they show you how to do some common tasks like replacing a sky, changing colors, adding a frame to a photo, and combining two images by selecting and layering. And in addition to these built-in tutorials, there are lots more free videos on tv.adobe.com. Next, I'm going to move on to workflow issues and some things which may be unfamiliar or surprising to new users. What you see on the opening screen are the Photoshop Touch files and the folders in your Creative Cloud, along with a Tutorials icon and another icon, which just allows you to choose between running a tutorial and creating a new project. For some reason, Adobe calls Photoshop Touch files projects rather than files, although they don't seem to be projects in the sense that Adobe usually uses the term, as in Premiere Pro or After Effects, where you import multiple files to create a project. One thing that's confusing when you first start using Photoshop Touch is that you don't see your Creative Cloud photos here in its opening screen. Here's my Creative Cloud as seen from my PC's browser. As you can see, there are several image files here in my top level folder. But here's what I see on the opening screen of Photoshop Touch. We only see this one file called Untitled. That's actually a Photoshop Touch project file. When we look at it here in my desktop browser, we can see that it has the PSDX extension, which identifies it as a Photoshop Touch project. That extension is not shown in the PS Touch opening screen. But the fact that it is displayed here tells us that it's a Photoshop Touch project file. The fact that you can't see regular image files means that you can't just tap on one and start editing it. You have to first create a new project by tapping one of these two icons and import a file into it. So you're never actually editing JPEG or PSD files directly. You just import them into a Photoshop Touch project and make your edits there while the original files are untouched. Unfortunately, if you want to import two files into a new Photoshop Touch project at once, you can't do that. You have to select just one as you open the project. Then, once you're in the app, you can tap the New Layer icon to add a new photo layer. You can then select the second photo to add as the second layer. Okay, so now we know how to create a project and import files. Where can we import files from? Currently, there are five places we can get images from. The Creative Cloud, naturally. Photos that are already on your tablet. From Google, so for example, if I want a photo of the Eiffel Tower, all I have to do is search. You can download any of your photos from Facebook. And you can take a picture with your tablet's camera and bring it right into Photoshop Touch. What if you want to get photos from your phone into Photoshop Touch? Well, right now, that's not so easy. Probably the simplest approach is to email the photo from your phone to yourself, and then open the email on your tablet and save the image there. Or if you have an Android phone and an Android tablet, go into your Google Plus app settings and turn Instant Upload on. Then take a picture and wait for it to automatically upload. After it's uploaded, go to the Google Plus app on your tablet and download the photo. What about getting photos from a point-and-shoot camera, a Micro Four Thirds camera, or an SLR into Photoshop Touch? If you happen to have a camera with Wi-Fi built in, you might be able to send your photos directly to your tablet without even needing an internet connection. 
Otherwise, you're probably going to have to upload your photos to the Creative Cloud first. But there are some gotchas related to file formats that you need to be aware of. I'll get to those next. There are several file format compatibility problems with the Creative Cloud and Photoshop Touch. One problem is that the Creative Cloud doesn't display layers in TIFF files. Here's a small TIFF file with two layers, one right side up and the other upside down, that I created in Photoshop and saved with no compression. However, as you can see, the layers icon is missing for this file. Another problem is that you can't preview media files such as QuickTime, audio wave files, or MPEG files. Creative Cloud does show poster images for movies, but that's all. And for some reason, you're not allowed to share MPEG-4 files, although you can share QuickTime files and WAV files. I'm going to move on now to file issues specifically with Photoshop Touch. First, I need to point out a file size limitation in Photoshop Touch. By default, the largest image you can edit is 1600 by 1600 pixels. But you can change the maximum allowed file size to 2K in the settings. I wouldn't call this size limitation a problem, although some others have. Myself, I'd say that's a reasonable limitation that's been imposed in order to ensure good performance in both editing and uploading and downloading. However, this is something you need to be aware of because it means that larger images will automatically be reduced in size when they are imported into Photoshop Touch. And there's no warning, they just get resized silently. If there is a problem with this size limit, I think the problem is that there's no notice of the fact that your image is being resized. This is especially true because the Creative Cloud doesn't show you the resolution of your Photoshop Touch projects. That's odd because the resolution of regular image files is shown. At this point, I'm going to wrap up part two of this series of videos, the Adobe Creative Cloud for Photographers. I had originally been planning this as a two-part series, but as I've gotten into it, I've discovered that there is more material than I can fit into two parts, so I'm expanding to three parts. In the third part, which I hope to post within a couple of weeks, I'll cover the following topics. Exporting from Photoshop Touch to your tablet's gallery, to Facebook, to email, and the Creative Cloud. I'll give some more information on file format limitations. I'll have a discussion of some quirks in the user interface. And I'll close with some thoughts about who is the target audience for Photoshop Touch and the Creative Cloud. So check back in a couple of weeks for the latest video in this series. Thanks for watching this episode of The Photo Performance. I hope you learned something interesting and useful today. Please visit photoperformance.org for more photo processing news and reviews. Follow me on Twitter or on Google+. And please share this info through your social media networks.